Welcome to one of Simon's free podcast adventures. If you'd like to listen to all of the adventures, you'll find them for sale over on Simon's Adventure Stories. Bandcamp.com. Here comes Simon. G'day, my name is Simon. I'm an Australian green tree frog, but I'm also a fact finding frog. I love finding out facts about things and sharing them with you on our adventures. And if you're ready, we can go on another adventure right now. So let's take in one really big slow breath together. And when we breathe out, we'll be off on our adventure. Okay, deep breath in. Hold it. Breathe out. Here we go. Oh, wow. I've only got one thing to say about this adventure, and that one thing is, it's about time. That's because right now, we're inside my mindful frog time machine. Why, yeah, you heard that right, my time machine. I hope your imagination is fit and healthy, because it's about to get a serious workout. Now, standing inside my time machine, it's a bit like standing inside a snow globe because the roof is a dome shape made of crystal clear glass. And through the glass, you can still see my rainforest. You can even see my magical tree stump off in the distance. Because we're inside a dome, the floor we're standing on is a circle. The whole floor is actually a clock. We are standing right on the clear plastic face of a giant round white clock. It has green numbers and green hands and a green button right in the centre. Can you hear it ticking as the second hand moves around? Actually, I can feel a tiny vibration through my feet every time it ticks. I'll bet you can too. I tried eating a clock once, but it was very time consuming. (laughs) Oh, did you hear about the inventor who glued lots of clocks to his belt? I'd call that a waste of time. (laughs) Okay, I reckon we're ready to fire up this time machine and do some mindful time travelling. Now, not many people know how to drive a time machine, including me, but we're in luck because this one has an amazing computer built into it. I just have to remember how to turn it on. Hmm. Oh yeah, now I remember. It's that green button right in the middle of the clock. In your imagination, Would you mind taking a couple of steps forward and putting your foot on the green button for me? Hmm, that's it. Oh, well done. Oh, I can hear it starting up now. Hello and welcome aboard the Mindful Frog Time Machine. All systems are operating at 100% capacity. No errors detected. Oh, thanks, computer. That is cool bananas. I am not detecting any bananas aboard the time machine. Oh, sorry, computer. I just meant that it's good to know that everything is working perfectly. Perhaps you could just say that it is good to know. Ah, that's right. I forgot. The Mindful Frog computer is very strict and doesn't really get my jokes. Look, I'll show you. A computer? Yes, Simon. Why did the computer cross the road? I do not know. Why did the computer cross the road? Well, because it was programmed by the chicken. (laughs) Simon, a computer cannot cross the road, and chickens cannot program computers. Oh, sorry, computer. That was a joke. If you say so, would you like to start on your adventure? 
Oh, yes, please. Can we really travel anywhere in time? Yes. Seriously? Anywhere? Seriously, anywhere. Okay, then. Can we please visit the two most famous dinosaurs of all time? Certainly. Setting the time target to 65 million years ago. 65 million years ago? How long will that take? I have some flies coming around for dinner, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Estimated travelling time is 36 seconds. Initiating temporal drive. Wow! Here we go then. Oh, check out the glass roof. It's starting to go a bit cloudy. And now... We can't see my rainforest anymore. That's what happens when we start travelling through time. Currently 50 years in the past and accelerating. Have a look at the clock we're standing on. Its hands are turning around backwards. And they're getting faster and faster. Now 5,000 years in the past. Whoa, that was quick. One million years in the past. How excellent. The hands on the clock are spinning backwards so fast, we can't even see them. Now approaching 65 million years ago, applying the chronographic continuance stampers. What are you doing? I am putting on the brakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Hmm. Yeah, and it's working too. Look, the glass is becoming clear again and the hands on the clock have almost stopped spinning. Welcome to the late Cretaceous period. Current location is North America. Current time is 65 million years in the past. Is it safe for us to go outside? Yes. The temperature outside is 18 degrees Celsius, and oxygen levels are well within acceptable parameters for humans and frogs. Would you like me to open a doorway? Yes, please, computer. Whoa! Can you feel that beautiful cool breeze coming in through the doorway? Well, now you know what the air smells like when it's 65 million years old. Oh, come on. Let's head outside and see if we can spot some dinosaurs. Any last advice for us, computer? If you see a meat-eating dinosaur, run or hide. No problem. If there's one thing I'm really good at, it's running and hiding. <laughs> oh, hang on. That's two things I'm really good at. <laughs> anyway... Let's think about taking a nice, slow walk in this prehistoric forest. Better keep our eyes and ears peeled for those dinosaurs, especially the meat-eating ones. We don't want to be anybody's lunch or dinner. Do you know why dinosaurs eat raw meat? Well, they don't know how to cook. <laughs> and how many dinosaurs can you fit into an empty box. Well, only one. After that, it's not empty. <laughs> Ooh, wow! That's the detail detective sound. There's something for us to notice and it's something we can hear and feel. Can you hear that rumbling sound in the distance? And can you feel the ground vibrating just the tiniest bit under your feet. It's getting a bit stronger and louder now. There must be something really big or heavy coming this way. The edge of the forest is only about 10 steps away. Let's see if we can find out what's making all that noise. OK, we're just past the edge of the forest. Right in front of us is a swamp. Now that's a bit like a small lake with trees and plants growing in it. <laughs> Have a look on the right hand side. There's a herd of huge creatures that are going to walk through the swamp right in front of us. And when I say huge, I mean absolutely ginormous. That's what's making the ground tremble 
There must be at least 50 of them. And they look roughly the same shape as a rhinoceros. But they're easily twice the size of any rhinoceros I've ever seen. I reckon we've found our first famous dinosaur. And some of them are in the middle of the swamp already, straight ahead of us, and they're stopping to have a drink. I bet you never thought you'd be this close to a dinosaur. And I'll bet you didn't think they'd be that big. The biggest ones in that herd are as long as a school bus. And check out the horns on their heads. They don't just have one horn, like a rhinoceros. They've got three of them. A smaller horn on the top of their nose and two really long ones above their eyes. Behind their neck is a big frill. That's made of bone. And their mouth looks like something you'd find on a giant parrot. Can you see that? Their mouth is the same shape as a parrot's beak. Oh, you've worked it out, haven't you? We're looking at a herd of Triceratops. Oh, I love that name, Triceratops. It actually means three-horned face. And what would you get if you crossed a Triceratops with a kangaroo? A Triceratops! <laughs> Ooh, that's the detailed detective sound again. There's something interesting for us to notice about those horns. Do you notice that they're a different shape depending on how big the Triceratops is? The fully grown ones have horns that point forwards and down a bit. The medium ones, oh, I reckon they're the Triceratops teenagers. They have horns that go forward and curve up. But the little ones, oh, how cute are they? They're the Triceratops toddlers. They have horns that point straight ahead. Hmm. And can you see how big the heads on the oldest ones are? They're the same size as a small car. Now that means you could easily fit inside the skull of a Triceratops. Now check out how some of them are biting big pieces off the trees as they go past. You know, scientists used to think that horses and bison had the best teeth for munching plants. But it turns out Triceratops had the best teeth of all. They could slice and split and crush and chew just about anything. Well, when you weigh as much as a truck and you're a vegetarian, you do need the best plant-eating choppers, that's for sure. (laughs) Now, they may not be a meat-eating dinosaur, but I wouldn't want to get in the way of those horns. Some of them are a metre long. Oh, I bet they come in handy for fighting off the other dinosaurs, though. (laughs) Well, what would you call a dinosaur that never gives up? A try, try, try (laughs) triceratops. Oh, it looks like they're all heading off, looking for lots more yummy plants to eat. Uh, We'll see you next time, guys. (laughs) Well... Next time we travel back 65 million years, that is. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's the detailed detective sound again. There's something for us to look at back inside the forest. We must have walked right past it when we came out to see the Triceratops. It's in a clearing over on the right-hand side just a few steps away from the forest edge. Oh, man! How did we miss that? It's a huge, round nest about the size 
back of one of those little blow-up swimming pools you might have in your backyard. Can you see this in your mind? There are some quite big eggs in it and, ooh, they're starting to crack a tiny, weeny bit. Whatever's inside is ready to come out. Oh, come on. This is your chance to actually touch a real, live dinosaur egg. So think about walking up to the edge of the nest and reaching your hand in. That's it. Those eggs are a bit bigger than a football. So think about resting your hand gently on the outside of one of them. Oh, can you feel how leathery the surface of the egg is? Oh, and how warm. Is it starting to wobble a little bit? That is a baby dinosaur starting to wriggle around inside. Uh Uh-oh! Did you hear that? Do you know what time it is? It's running and hiding time. That's what time it is. I reckon that's the mother of these eggs. And I don't think she's a plant eater like the Triceratops. Let's head for those trees about 15 steps away. That's it. Then it'll be close enough to have a good look. Let's go. But far enough away to stay hidden. Okay, we made it. And we're just in time to see the most famous dinosaur in the world coming towards us through the trees. Now those are the footsteps of an eight-ton Tyrannosaurus Rex. Can you see that in your mind's eye? A dinosaur that's taller than your house. And because she's a reptile, her skin is a bit scaly like every other lizard. If you were standing next to her, your head wouldn't even come up to her knee. I wonder if she knows how many books and movies she's going to end up in. I just wish I could go over there and take a selfie with her. (laughs) But she'd probably just eat me. Mm. A T-Rex really is a total dinosaur rock star. Their eyesight is four times better than an eagle's. So they could actually see you from miles away. That's scary. They were also seriously smart because they had a really big head with a really big brain in it. In fact, her head is so big and heavy She needs that super long tail on the other end of her body so she can balance when she walks. Do you know, even T-Rex skeletons are worth more than any other dinosaur fossils. The Chicago Museum in America paid $8 million for a T-Rex skeleton called Sue. Mm. Oh, wow! That's the detail detective sound. There's something for us to smell and something for us to look at. And they might just be the same thing. So first of all, think about taking a deep breath in. And see if you can imagine that horrible smell that's starting to drift our way. It smells like someone lifted up the lid on a compost bin on a hot day. (laughs) And it seems to be coming from the T-Rex. We'll need our detailed detective binoculars to check this out properly. So, think about holding your binoculars up to your eyes and pointing them up at the T-Rex's head. Now, focus on those amazing teeth. They're easy to see because she's got 60 of them in that enormous mouth and some of them are as long as a ruler. And if you look closely, 
You'll see green and brown stains all along the edges and in between them. The sides of her teeth have tiny grooves in them and the meat that she eats gets stuck in there all the time. Then those bits of meat go rotten and give her the worst bad breath. And that's what we can smell down here. Ooh. If those teeth didn't kill you, the smell of her breath might. Ooh. Oh, look. She's bending down to check out her eggs. And she's giving them a good sniff. Did I happen to mention that a T-Rex also has an excellent sense of smell? She probably noticed the smell of your hand on one of her eggs. And now she's sniffing the air to work out where we are. Oh, I think it's time for us to head back before we get stuck in her teeth. Come on, think about taking a deep breath in. We'll hold it and breathe out. Here we go. Oh, wow! That was excellent, being 65 million years in the past, but I'm glad to be back in the here and now. And that T-Rex was a bit too clever for my liking. Now, just before you go, I've got one more dinosaur joke for you. What's grey weighs 10 tonnes and flies. A dinosaur in a helicopter. (laughs) I'll see you next time. Or as they say in the museum, please don't let your dog chew the dinosaur bones. They cost $8 million. If you'd like to own all of Simon's Adventures forever, then head over to simonsadventurestories.bandcamp.com. Thanks for listening.